Hello YouTube, I'm Pedro from the Wicked Cut team. On the last couple of videos, I show you guys how to import a 3D model to Unity 5 and how to create and apply materials. If you guys remember, we created a very simple materials to use in our model, this tree right here. And today, I'm going to show you guys how you can use the standard shader of Unity 5 to use physically based shading. If you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like and, if you want more Unity 5 tutorials, remember to subscribe to our channel. So, like I showed you guys on the last video, uh, you can when you create a new material in Unity 5, the engine will apply the default shader, which is the standard shader. You can select the shader of a material, right here, with the material selected. On the top, you can select the shader you want to use, so by default, the standard shader is selected. This shader is very versatile and you can use it almost to create all materials in your project. So if you select select the material and the shader right here, you will notice that on this list we have two versions of the standard shader. We have the standard with nothing in the front and the standard specular setup. Now the standard, this one here, is the metallic approach and this one is the specular approach. The metallic approach, uh, with metallic approach, we use a, a value to determine if the material is metallic or not. In the case of a metallic material, the albedo color, which is right here, this color or this texture, will control the color of the specular reflection. This, this means that most of the light will be reflected as specular reflection. The non-metallic materials will have uh, specular reflections that are the same color of the incoming light. This will barely reflect when uh, looking at the surface of the, the object with this material. Now, with the specular approach, this one right here, uh, the specular color is used to control the color and strength of specular reflections. So you can define the specular color right here. This makes it possible to have specular reflection of a different color than the diffuse reflection. Okay? So to start, uh, we are going to take a look at the metallic version of the standard shader. So let's change this back to the metallic version. And as you can see, Right here on the inspector, we have several parameters that you can configure. Now the first option is rendering mode. Uh, this allows you to define if the objects use transparency in, and if so, which blending mode uh, you are going to use. So if you click here, you can see that you have four options. You can choose opaque, which should be used with on normal solid objects with no transparent areas. That is what we have selected right now and which is what makes sense for our material. But you can select also uh, cutout. What happens with this is that uh, allows you to create transparency effect with uh, hard edges between the opaque and transparent areas. Now, keep in mind that you don't actually notice any difference on the model because um, the transparency is on the alpha channel and since we don't have any transparency on the texture we are using uh, we have no information on the alpha channel about transparency on the texture that you are actually using to create the material you, you won't notice any difference. Now, the next option right here is transparent now with transparent you already notice some difference okay as you may imagine this is actually perfect to be used on materials such as clear glass clear plastic or, or glass for example and finally we have fade now this one allows transparency values to entirely fade an object out including any specular highlights or reflections. Uh, this is best used to animate an object fading in or fading out. Uh, however, keep in mind that since this, this, um, 
rendering mode um, also uh, applies transparency to specular highlights and reflection this is not meant to be used on glass or clear plastic so if you want to use a glass or plastic just use transparent so we want our pack for our model so the next parameter you already talked on the last video is albedo so you basically can use this to select a default color for the for the material or you can use a map with textures that we are have what you are actually having right here the texture for this area of the model so basically the albedo parameter controls the base color of the surface next and this is specific to the metallic approach we have the metallic parameter right here now the parameter this parameter sets how the metallic the surface of the material is when the surface is metallic it reflects more and its albedo color becomes less visible so if we increase the value of metallic right here we should all actually see some difference right here you can see it let me just change the, the camera view so you can actually notice the difference you guys can see so like I was saying um, when you when you uh, increase the level of metallic the albedo color becomes less visible and becomes it reflects more the environment around it um, so with full metallic level the surface color is entirely driven by reflections from the environment uh, when the surface is less metallic its albedo color is clearer so as you can see the albedo color is clear right now so by default the metallic has no texture meaning that you need to set values for metallic and smoothness with these two sliders you can also adjust the smoothness right here as you guys can see um, this may work for some materials but ideally you should have a metal texture map so in our case we have a metallic texture that I created to use on our model which is we are actually working with which material okay the cargo back so cargo front cargo back so is this one um, so we are going to actually use this um, material so on this texture um, you have values that go from white to, to black in several levels of gray and this defines how metallic the area is so darker tones will give you a less metallic look while lighter, to lighter tones will give you a more metallic look so since our model is basically all metallic we have a texture that is basically all white not entirely white if you guys could uh, increase the size of the texture you'll know that it has some changes in gray levels but almost all white okay so to apply this you actually go to material we select our material you go back here to texture and you just drag it and as you guys can see once you apply the metallic on the on the material the the two sliders will disappear because now it's getting the information it needs from the metallic uh, map now let's do the same for the remaining materials so okay this is the cargo front so this one here okay so if you guys take a look here you guys can now see that metallic information is being given by these maps and now for the last material we have the wheels the wheels are not metallic so we don't want it to have this shine like the rest of the model so we have um, this one and as you guys can see 
these are dark values of grey so this will mean that we will basically not reflect almost anything okay so what we are actually going to do is to select the wheels and we drag this to our metallic um, field so okay guys let's let do a little break here on the next video we are continue to explore the remaining parameters of the standard shader so as you guys can see we still have uh, several parameters to talk about so let's do a break here um, hope you guys enjoyed it and until the next video have a nice day